Welcome back to the Arts Department, everyone. I'm Autumn Rain Turkel, and this video is Drawing 101, The Basics of Lying. This video is going to cover the fundamentals of lying and give you a couple of tools that you can use to improve your lines in whatever medium you choose. So first we have to ask, what is lying? Lying can be defined in a couple of ways. Lying can be a continuous series of dots between two points on a surface. Or, line is a mark between two points on a surface. Either way, it's contained between two points. You can see that clearly if you look at a Bezier curve between two points in an application like Photoshop or Illustrator or anything that does those sorts of points. That will also show you, depending on the number of points along that line, that can define the features of that line. Meaning, if there's more points, then you can change the attributes of the line. So you can have something more squiggly, you can have something more jagged. Now that we know what a line is, we ask, what are the elements of line? Line can have orientation, meaning it can be vertical, horizontal, diagonal. Uh, it can have momentum. It can be zigzag, or chaotic, or restless. Uh, it can be curved and easy feeling. Another element of line is variation, and that can be uh, the length, the varied length of a line. Um, it could be the weight of the line, meaning uh, thick to thin, or thin to thick, or any number of weight distributions. Another element of line is texture. You can change up the texture of a line simply through pushing harder or softer with a certain utensil or by changing your utensil altogether, meaning uh, moving to charcoal or conte crayon or ink or wash or pen or brush ink. There's a number of ways to get different textures with lines. If you are in the digital realm, a way to do it is to change up the brush itself. So go from something that's completely opaque to something that has more texture to it. And that's within Photoshop or Procreate or Krita or any of those applications, that's the brush palette that will help you do that. Another way is to change the paper texture in your whatever application you're using. Um, just have something underneath what you're working on to give it a little more life. So now that we know the elements of line, we ask what are the types of lines? Um, lines that you can make would be contour lines, continuous line that never ends, you don't pick up your utensil when you're doing it. Uh, parallel lines, meaning lines that are next to one another, and cross-hatching, which is lines that intersect one another. Um, you can do decorative lines, um, meaning filigrees and stuff like that, those swirlies. Uh, you can do implied line, and that is a lost and found type of line, where uh, it, you start a line and you let the line break up and you don't show it anymore and then you continue it elsewhere. Uh, you can do a gestural line, which is just a, a quick kind of flick of the wrist type of line. So now we know some different types of lines. Now we want to know what can line do? Uh, line is good at defining forms. So uh, the contours, the exteriors of shapes are uh, going to define your forms. Uh, you can also define form through cross contours by cutting into the shape and over the shape and that will push it back in space. Line can be expressive in the way that it's laid down, meaning you can express emotions through the way that you're placing your marks on the paper. Uh, so if you were to use uh, sharp and jagged marks versus something curved and soft, there's different feelings that come from those marks. There's aggressive feelings versus smooth and, and, and flowing. Um, you can be playful um, and silly, or you can be very serious and meticulous about what you're doing. Uh, like I said before, you can be aggressive or calm, or you can be meandering and kind of let the line uh, go away from what your initial form is. Or you, again, you can be very concise and precise and make sure that you are doing something uh, almost mechanical in nature in dictating a form. But generally, lines are gonna be expressing form. So the question is, what are the limits? Uh, line is really good at expressing shape and contour and cross contours, three-dimensional items in a linear way that, that defines the exterior edges and interior cross contours that kind of build you a three-dimensional structure. 
But given control, you can use shading and, and tone, which then opens up a greater number of possibilities in, in showing three-dimensional space in a realistic way. But at that point, it's, it's no longer line, it's shading or hatching or cross-hatching. Hatching being lines right next to each other to show form, or cross-hatching meaning lines crossing one another to show both form and depth of shadow. Also, when we close off a shape, our mind naturally sees that shape, so it's no longer line. We are defining the bounds of that shape, and our mind will then see that shape. So if I draw a square or a cube, then what we see is a square or a cube. We don't see it as an individual line. So some techniques that you can use to further some of your own understanding of line and your own expertise with line. Um, one of them is a contour drawing. And contour drawing is just defining the exterior edges of forms, finding the shape of something and putting it down on the paper. In conjunction with that, you can do a blind contour study. And what that is, is just looking at that contour and keeping your eye on the contour as you draw and not lifting up your pencil and not looking down at your page and just doing a study of what your mind thinks it sees and how that translates through your hand and onto the page. And then later on, you can use that to your advantage by remembering or looking at those lines and looking at what your hand did and thinking about what the motion was. And it helps you kind of expand your mental model of objects. Another technique that you can use is box drawing or construction drawing. And the basics of that is looking at an object and breaking it down into its requisite forms. Is it a column? Is it a cube? Is it a rectangle? Is it what are those forms and breaking it out into those forms before you move on to your final drawing. It's the foundation that you use to build on top of with a tighter and tighter drawing. But if you go around and you break everything out into its forms with the correct proportions to one another, then it helps you to see those more quickly. And then you can eventually forego box drawing and construction and move on to just doing it directly because you'll be that much more practiced with it. Like box drawing and construction is puzzle piecing. And that's essentially looking at anatomical forms and seeing how they fit together like a puzzle. You need to study a lot of anatomy for that one. But the next time that you're doing a study in a book of anatomy, try looking at the muscles and the way that they fit together like a puzzle, and then using that as puzzle piecing your anatomy together. And that will help you much like construction does because then you can puzzle piece it and place your finish lines on top of that. A technique that animators use is repetitive investigational lines. And what that is is going over and over the line many times until you find the exact line that you're looking for and then putting it down. And eventually you take another piece of paper and you get all of those final lines and you clean it up on that second piece of paper by tracing it off. And then your line feels just exactly what you want it to feel like and you have a nice clean drawing to work off of for your illustration. Similar to the repetition of lines to get your final is confidence strokes. And that would be not putting down those initial lines, but going through the motion, like actually doing that movement. Doing the movement, doing the movement, and then for that last line, put your pencil down and go across the line. And that will give you a confident looking line. And you will also train your hand to find that confident line more quickly. There are artists dating back to cavemen who are using lines to express everything under the sun. You can use lines to find your voice, to find your technique that sings, and play around with lines. Work with the different techniques to find what feels right to you. Um, and most of all, have fun. All right, that's it for the lines, just the basics. Uh, we hope you found some value in it. We hope that you learned something. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the things you need to do to get notified next time we post something up. While you're down there in the About section, check out the social media. We've got Instagram, Twitter, uh, Discord, where you can connect with the like-minded individuals. There's an art station where you can get reference materials for art as well as see some of the things that we do. Finally, there's the Twitch. We go live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 
come on by and join the discussion. Love to have you there. That's it from the arts department. Keep drawing in. We'll see you next time. Uh, the fundamentals of line. The... It can be a continuum. At a certain point, you are expressing shapes. Um, be it... At a certain point, it becomes shading, and it's less about line, and it takes on a painterly quality. Okay. Painting with a pencil or with whatever utensil you're using, um, but that's the that to show depth of both, and that's when you get into positive and negative space. But really, um, in 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 conjunction with that, you could do a blind contour study. Okay. Similar to the re repetition. Lines of. Okay. Nope. Do everything you need to do to get notified next time we post something up along these lines. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs>